I need to emphasize this very, very clearly. This video has a lot of speculation in it, and these speculations are purely based on my opinion. And this isn't meant to be like a sarcastic, oh, I, I'm saying this, but I really mean this. I am very, very serious, and I need you, the viewer, to take this into account, that this is all my speculation on this email. The intentions that I assume are all speculative. Please, I, I really need to emphasize this very, very specifically. In case you're unfamiliar, Gab is the failed experiment of a deranged right-winger trying to cultivate a community of anti-vaxxers, election deniers, and other radical conspiracy theorists. It's advertised as an alternative to big tech sites like Twitter, and they try to wrangle up new viewers by presenting themselves as an altruistic force fighting for freedom of speech, with platitudes like, speak free and boldly, about anything that isn't pornographic or quote-unquote obscene, according to their terms of service, and I will not comply, with this hilarious graphic that I'm sure isn't just a clip art image they downloaded. Look at their great paint bucket work here. Now, despite the mask that they're very, very loosely wearing, it's become a safe haven for hateful right-wingers and racists, and Andrew Torba chooses to defend those people to the grave. People try to pretend that he's standing up for freedom of speech, and that's why he's so adamant about defending this community. But if you need proof that this website is just a place for hateful people to communicate, just look at the site's trends. Q Research, 119,000 members. QAnon, 172,500 members. It's also the very first trend I'm recommended, by the way. Stop the Steal, 176,500 members. There isn't a single trend relevant to left-wing politics or civil rights. I type the word Jew into the search bar, and the first account I'm recommended is a verified account called The Jewish Problem. The banner of this account proudly features Hitler and his regime, with a pinned post that's been compressed to hell, claiming that Jews control the world. If anti-Semitism has no merit, then why have Jews been banned in 109 countries and counting? Well, and, and that is checkmate, Jews. Good luck arguing that rock-solid point. Verified account, first account that comes up if you search the word Jew. But why am I talking about Geb? Well, I got an email from them the other day yelling about how it could get me banned from big tech. At that moment, I figured it's time to add an addendum to my previous video. So the first thing we see is this lovely, crunchy image that they sent. I guess images above 480p are also another Jewish liberal conspiracy intended to wipe out all white people. Look at the news from the past few weeks. The Biden admin is flagging content for Facebook to censor. And if you click the link, it goes to a Newsweek article about how the Biden administration has been personally flagging misinformation on Facebook regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. The same pandemic that Donald Trump exacerbated, played down the intensity of, and fueled misinformation regarding it until half a million people died from it. Joe Biden doesn't want people to die, and more so, he wants to get reelected. He wants to follow through on his campaign promises, so that's why he's taking affirmative action against the causes of death from COVID, one of those causes being the misinformation spread on Facebook specifically, convincing people of things that just aren't true. Misinformation is already against Facebook's terms of service. Biden isn't influencing them. They are reporting these posts just like anybody else in the country can. The Biden administration isn't being abusive with their powers here in, in this specific regard. They are doing the same thing that everyone else that uses Facebook can do report a post which is against their terms of service. And they try to argue that this violates the First Amendment, but if you can believe it, the First Amendment does not cover lies. It is explicitly denotated in the First Amendment that freedom of the press that you guys are claiming covers what you're saying only applies if what you're saying is true. If it's not true, then it's a lie, and therefore not covered by the Constitution. When contacted for a comment, a Facebook official told Newsweek that the company is taking action to combat COVID-19 misinformation, and has thus far removed more than 18 million pieces of misinformation-related content. These aren't people that are just sharing their opinion, they're sharing blatant lies about COVID-19. Blatant lies that have led to people dying. Imagine if Trump did that. 
Well, if Trump had done that, then we probably wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. Speaking of COVID-19 misinformation, Gab is a deliberate perpetuator of that, and will share anything that isn't in support of the CDC guideline, no matter how batshit the source is, or even if there's a source at all. Here's part of a previous email I've received in which Andrew Torba claims, Grand Emperor Tom Wolf is issuing new guidelines that force families to wear masks in their own homes. He didn't include a source for this, because if he did, his own claim would be debunked by the third bullet point on the most prominent paragraph of the site. It specifically states that you should wear them indoors among people outside of your household. He's being deceptive to make the guidelines seem more tyrannical than it really is. And the reason why he's trying to make it seem more tyrannical than it really is is because he wants to gain camaraderie with the reader and he wants to start up a group that can hopefully push back against the government, push back against them and insurrect it. And if you don't believe me, there's also this really disturbing bit in the same email in which he talks about everyone in support of Christ gathering together to fight against these so-called totalitarian movements. That was the first sentence. The ADL is L lobbying the IRS and payment processors to financially censor political dissidents, including Christians and Trump supporters. The way it's written seems to insinuate that the ADL is going to convince politicians to persecute Christians and Trump supporters because he specifically outlines those two demographics, and he uses the word lobbying to make it sound like there's affirmative legal action being done when there isn't. The very first definition of the word lobbying is to seek to influence a politician or public official on an issue. So you'd assume that the author means exactly what the first definition is. When no, once again, Andrew was being deceptive, because if you read the attached link, Andrew, you would see no talk of lobbyists or politicians or anything to do with the law. And the alleged political dissidents that you speak of are the specific terrorists that tried to siege the Capitol building to delay the election certification process. The ADL was calling for the IRS to investigate these people because they believe that some of them may be using their nonprofit status to further their violent objectives or enrich their leaders, which is fraud, which is illegal. It is the IRS's job to investigate financial fraud. Yeah, Republicans will hate the IRS until they use it to remove regulation in the financial industry to cause a massive financial crisis and then blame the next president because he couldn't immediately fix it at the drop of a hat. Now, for transparency's sake, I despise the ADL. They want to discourage edgy movies and satire of people like Nazis, racists, homophobes, etc. because they believe that they'll just reinforce the beliefs of those people. Hell, they criticize Sacha Baron Cohen for the movie Borat for those exact reasons. Reasons. They said that anti-Semitic people will watch the movie and then that will affirm their own anti-Semitic beliefs. Even though Sacha Baron Cohen is Jewish himself. I don't know where they get off saying that Jewish people can't make fun of anti-Semites, but they say it's because they have this naive idea that if those things are fought against, then those people will just change their minds at once. They won't. Hateful people are always going to find reasons to hate, and the ADL has their priorities totally wrong. But Andrew Torba doesn't mention this at all, something that actually is outrageous about the ADL. He just wants to maintain the safety of those people that raided the Capitol building to delay the election certification process. The email goes on to say that Facebook is asking millions of people to report their friends as extremists. Once again, if Andrew Torba had the literacy of a fifth grader, he would know that the very article he's linking isn't asking for people to turn on their friends and report them as extremists. They're urging people to report political extremists. Political extremists, as you yourself state later in this email, have done immense damage to this country. They make America into a punchline. They kill. They corrupt. But even though you claim that you're against these individuals, you show support for them in every email that you send me, and claim that their inflammatory lies are just simple opinions and that they're being persecuted for their opinions. And I can only imagine this is because you want to convince more people of their ideologies to get more people on your side and then mark it under, we protect the First Amendment, and then do damage control by claiming you're against political extremists. 
Gab does not protect the First Amendment, by the way. Despite what this line says, they will ban you and delete your posts if they find you to be obscene. I made a video a while back about how they will purge pornographic posts on their site. They only want to defend their definition of freedom of speech, which is that slanderous lies that defame people and lead to real-world harm and violence are okay, but pornography is not okay because they believe it corrupts the mind. Gab's slippy slidey about everything and will say that they're against extremists, but will also tweet out to them and invite them to their website because their stance on the First Amendment isn't logically consistent. This is all within the first three sentences of this email, and every single source that Andrew is using to back up his fraudulent claims contradict exactly what he's saying. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it reveals how he distorts the wording in, the, in his summary of these articles to convince his radical supporters that they are being oppressed and to affirm these beliefs in these people. I feel like he wanted to act like there was any credibility to what he was saying, so he just looked up these turns afterwards and then found some headlines that are vaguely close enough and then distorted them to persuade people. And it's ironic because this actually makes him look more nefarious because it exposes how he distorts the truth to benefit himself and his party. He can't handle any sort of criticism to his own site, his practices, his party, or his beliefs either. In fact, when I tweeted out my first video about Gab, I actually tagged them in the tweet, and without a single acknowledgement, they just blocked me on the spot. They're not interested in friendly negotiation or listening to the other side, which are the most integral principles of freedom of speech in the first place, but he's not standing up for the principles of freedom of speech, because if he did, he wouldn't ban porn from his site. He's just standing up for how he wants the world to be. Think about it. The email is written in the most self-victimizing way it could have been, because they believe that if they can victimize themselves, they can gain sympathy and support for being oppressed, and in turn, gain control. If they can gain social control, they can gain political control. And once they can gain political control, then the alt-right can continue to elect people like Donald Trump, someone who's proven themselves to be the enemy of liberty, civil rights, and equality. And if you don't believe me, the very next paragraph is how they apparently wants to shut down Gab because they stand up for freedom of speech. Why do they criticize Gab so badly? It's simple. Gab is the only place you can criticize the experimental non-FDA approved vaccine. Gab is the only way you can criticize the 2020 election and cover the audits happening. Gab is the only place you can criticize groups like the American Jewish Congress and the ADL, both of whom are working to stifle free speech in America and around the world. There's no sources for these claims or any sources at all for the remainder of this email, if you can fucking believe it. You can see me debunk the election fraud claims in a previous video, but it's funny how he says the word criticize when every example of someone being banned from social media regarding those things were in cases where the account was deliberately spreading misinformation information regarding those things. They claim that the nondescript COVID vaccine isn't approved by the FDA and is leaving out critical information, like how the FDA itself authorized emergency use of the COVID-19 vaccinations because people were fucking dying. And because of those vaccinations, less people are fucking dying. The FDA is also working as fast as it can to approve the vaccinations, and it's weird how you claim that the vaccine is just an experiment but then give off the impression that if it isn't one, the FDA would approve it. Is the FDA just going rogue and refusing to approve it, Andrew? Or is it the simple fact that it takes a long time to approve formally, and they still allowed it to be distributed in emergency because of the urgency of the situation? Whenever they mention the COVID-19 vaccine which, by the way, they don't address in plural, they act like there's only one vaccine. They attach non-FDA approved on it like it's a smoking gun. Like, oh yeah, if it was credible, it would be FDA approved. Cigarettes are FDA approved. It's a lot like how other Republicans read out Obama's full name as Barack Hussein Obama, as if it's an indication of the quality of his character and not an entirely irrelevant detail. Oh, his middle name? That's the same last name as Saddam Hussein. And you know, Saddam Hussein, he was a pretty bad guy. So I don't know what that says about Barack Hussein Obama, but you know, it's just something to keep an eye on. It's just fun to talk about. I don't know what the hell the American Jewish Congress is, by the way, but 
it certainly sounds like something Gab would find excuses to be against. And this is supported by this email in which they were outraged that a website Trump joined updated their terms of service to specifically denounce anti-Semitic talk. Oh, but that basically equates to never being able to criticize Jewish people, Israel, or anything else in any capacity. Oh yeah, because there isn't a global hashtag going around right now in direct criticism of the Israeli government, right? Woody Allen wasn't mocked all the way to the blacklist for marrying his stepdaughter and allegedly molesting one of his daughters, right? James Franco wasn't sued for alleged sexual exploitation and fraud and then publicly shamed for it. That statement that you can't criticize Jewish people in any capacity is a lie. Full disclosure, I don't know what they're talking about with the American Jewish Congress. Because once again, it's written vaguely. They're written in a vague way because A, it's easier than finding specific examples of these things, and B, the reader's imagination can do the author's job for them. The reader is likely in support of these things that Andrew is saying, so they are going to fill in the blanks that Andrew is leaving. It's partially to cover his own ass, and it's also just easier for him to wrangle up supporters this way. Even if I despise the ADL, Andrew is either being delusional or dramatic about how much power the ADL really has on anything, and is using that to further his own fabricated points. And what more poetic way to end the email than begging for the reader's support because Gab is such a noble place with noble intentions, and that a small group of very powerful people are fighting against it, and they're willing to lie again. And then it closes with a Another high quality graphic of a white girl on a laptop with a not embarrassing at all laptop sticker and a very familiar logo to match it. To make a long story short, Gab and the supporters of it want power. They want to resume running this country because they're scared that they'll become the very people that they've been oppressing. They use dog whistles like 3% referring to how white people are the real minority of the world and use it to delegitimize the struggles and oppression of minorities that they have imposed in the first place via the people they voted into power. They think black civil rights activists see all white people as the enemy, so they see the inverse of that, when the simple fact is they don't see white people as the enemy they see those who oppress as the enemy. The party that wanted to ban burqas because they believed Muslims were terrorists. The party that imposed anti-voting regulations like closing voting polls at 5 p.m. right when people get off work. Denying people the right to offer water to those standing out in the hot Atlanta sun. Missing work to do their civic duty. The party that's fought against every civil right that America has gained in the last century. Party who's been fighting against everyone's right to be treated equal by denying the oppression that exists in the first place is the enemy. So yes, Gab, I hope I'm not playing into their suspicions, but they are right. You are the enemy of America. Your users, your supporters, and Andrew Torba Everyone that shares your hateful lies, misinformation, that you label as opinions, you are the enemy of America. You're holding us back from prospering. I hope I didn't sound a little petulant there, and I hope I don't sound like I'm taking things too far. But considering how they've already tried to do this through Donald Trump, I don't doubt that they'll try to do it again. They'll try to re-elect him in 2024 with all the new restrictions on voting that they have imposed across 17 different states with more than 200 bills currently pending in order to further persecute people for voting. It's something that I want you guys to watch out for. And again, I want you guys to research this yourself because I hope to be proven wrong. And if you do have a way to prove me wrong, please leave it in the comments and I will read it. I read all comments. And I've learned a lot from people that have proven me wrong. Something that Andrew Torba can't do, even as it happens time and time again. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.